Blessings, friends, and welcome to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle, and Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is January the 26th of the year 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12, which says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, there's many things we could discuss about this passage. What does fear mean? What does trembling mean? Friends, it, it means exactly what it says. Um, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Live your life before your master and your king with such reservation that you take into account every second of your life, every decision of your life, knowing that there is a consequence for every decision and every action. Now, with this in mind, I want to tackle a concept that has been pressed upon us by many, and at first thought, one might take issue with the topic simply because it has been ingrained within us. So I want to look into Scripture to see exactly what the Bible has to say about this before we form an opinion. So let's look together at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 24, which says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now with that in mind, I want you to stop and think about your Sunday morning service, because most of you probably attend service on Sunday morning, although the biblical Sabbath is Saturday. But I want you to stop and think about your Sunday morning service. How many times during that morning service do you encourage another? Do you exhort another to godlier living? Or do you come in? Do you sing your hymns? Do you play your tithes? Do you say your prayers? Do you listen to the preaching? Do you have another prayer and do you get up and do you leave? Most likely the latter because that's the normal Christian service. But notice that's not what the Bible says. It says certainly that we are not to forsake the assemblies of ourselves together. Well, this is true. We should meet with one another. But when we're together, it should be for a very specific purpose. It should be to exhort, encourage, build up, challenge each other to a higher state of godliness and holiness and righteous living. That's what it says. You see, my intention is not necessarily to challenge the idea of corporate worship. While I certainly think that it does hold its problems. What I want you to focus on today, friend, is your individual relationship with the Almighty. If every human being, myself included, were wiped off of the face of this earth, and you were the only one left, what would your relationship with the Most High be? How would you live your life? How would you conduct yourself? Because that is exactly how you should live your life and conduct yourself on an everyday basis. And so what I would submit to you is that we can get lost in a sea of misunderstanding when we fall into a corporate mentality because it almost gets to the point where if you can't beat them, join them. Live like the masses around you. But that's not what we've been called to do. Let me remind you with this verse, Matthew 12, verse 36. I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Well, let's look at another. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12, which says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works or you could say their individual works. Are you starting to see a theme here? We are each going to be held accountable, judged individually for the lives that we have lived. So let us not be lost in this idea that we are a corporate body. Yes, that is true. But we are individually going to stand before Messiah and give account for our lives. 
that should strike fear in our hearts, cause our hands to tremble, as our text says, that every man should seek his own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because we are each going to stand before him individually on our own and give account of the lives that we have lived. Finally, let's look at Romans chapter 14 and verse 12, which says, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now, friends, I want to encourage you because if you live your life this way, you're going to find out how much more simple it becomes. You're not intimidated by others because you are constantly aware of the fact that you are in a private personal relationship with the Almighty. Others can contribute to that. Others can encourage you. Others can motivate you. But ultimately, regardless of what they say or what they don't say, has no significance on your personal individual relationship with the Messiah. You can't blame your friends or your families or the events of this life for stealing your time and keeping you from spending time in the Word of God, spending you from keeping time on your knees in prayer and in worship and in adoration for all that He is. So friends, I want you to spend this day thinking about your individual relationship with your God and your King. Because friends, according to the word of God and testimony of men and women who have gone before us and left us record, it will change your life. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.